I was gonna say The Therapist, but that is not what this book is. It is by this author, though. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my May wrap-up for 2023. I read a total of 15 books this month, which I was very surprised with because I did not think I read that much, but here we are. I'm going to be breaking this wrap-up into three different parts because if not, it will be 6,000 hours long, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read is The Prisoner by B.A. Paris, and I ended up giving this 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Amelie, who ends up marrying a young billionaire, but then days later she is kidnapped with her now husband. She is being held hostage in a dark, boarded-up room, and she is trying to figure out why she was taken and how to escape, and it's kind of the story of that. Although I really do enjoy B.A. Paris's writing style, this one was definitely not one of my favorites that I've read for them. I think that the pacing was a lot slower than what I'm used to from them and I just kind of got bored a little bit throughout it. I did like how short the chapters were and how it had an alternating timeline. I think that definitely kept my interest in the story but like I said the pacing was a little bit slow for me. I was obviously interested enough in the story to keep reading and get to the end. I really wanted to know why Amelie was taken and how it all connected. I was also a little bit confused at times trying to keep everybody straight. I think that a lot of the characters were very similar to one another so I got a little bit mixed up in my head but overall it was a fun read so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I read Bet On It by Jody Slaughter. This is another one that I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Asia Owens who has just moved to a small town in South Carolina. There she meets a man named Walker who has returned to his hometown to care for his injured grandma. Their chemistry starts to flow on Wednesday night bingo when they create a sex pact that when one of them wins during bingo, they are able to get down and dirty with each other. I was expecting a very fluffy, very easy read from this, but it definitely was not. It was definitely a lot heavier than what I anticipated, and I think if I had known that going in, my expectations would have been a little bit different with this. I do think that the author did a good job with the anxiety, panic attack, and PTSD representation. Like I said, this is definitely a more serious romance with the top that it handled but I do think that it did a great job with those conversations and definitely handled them with care. I did like both of the main characters. I think that they did have a lot of chemistry and I definitely liked the friends to lovers trope in this. I think that it progressed in a very natural easy way. I also really liked how Asia is a bigger girl and it was mentioned multiple times in the book and very much celebrated. I think that that was great to see. Also, very big fan of the female friendships in this book. I love to see it and they definitely put a big smile on my face. Overall, it wasn't what I was expecting, but I still enjoyed it, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Forget Me Not by Alison Derrick. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. This follows Stevie and Nora, who have been secretly dating for the past two years. They're planning on running away together to California, but then Stevie ends up suffering from a very terrible accident that makes her forget the last two years of her life. Nora is devastated but she is determined to show Stevie that they belong together and it's like the story of that. I actually read the author's other book, She Gets the Girl, and I really enjoyed that and I was definitely intrigued to see what the writing style would be without her co-author and I was pleasantly surprised. I really loved this. It made me cry in the end and I do not cry at books so I was shocked but it really hurt my heart in a really good way though. I genuinely cared about these characters as I was reading about them. I loved both of them and I was definitely rooting for them the entire story. I loved watching Stevie gain feelings for Nora again and I love how patient Nora was waiting for Stevie to remember their connection. She never pushed her. I just think that Stevie was an amazing character. I loved watching her rediscover not only herself, but also her connection with Nora. I loved the snippets of Nora's letters to Stevie that we got. I really wish that we had gotten at least one or two chapters from Nora's point of view, just so that we could see inside of her head. So I was very glad that we did have those letters so we could kind of gauge what she was thinking at the time. 
I really love how Nora never gave up on Stevie and she knew in her heart that they were meant to be together. I highly recommend this, but definitely have the tissues ready because like I said, that ending will rip your heart out in the best possible way. But yeah, five out of five stars, one of my new favorite books. The next book that I have is Wrong Side of the Court. This is by H.N. Khan and I gave this a three out of five stars. This follows 15 year old Fawad who lives in Regent Park, which is a very run down rough neighborhood. He very suddenly loses someone very close to him through gun violence and to make matters worse, he is now the target of the school bully. He is trying to make his school's basketball team and his mother is pressuring him into marrying his cousin back in Pakistan. But Fawad has big dreams to become the first Pakistani in the NBA, and so he is just focusing on making that school team. This was an extremely fast read. I think I read it in a couple of hours. I do think that Fawad was a very relatable character. He just wants to live his life the way that he wants to, but he also doesn't want to disappoint his mom. I also really liked how it was set in Toronto because I'm quite familiar with that area, so it was cool to see bits and pieces of it that I've actually seen in real life in this book. I also think that the complex family and friend dynamics was really well done in this. Also, huge basketball fan, so I really liked how every aspect of the sport was incorporated into this story. The biggest complaint that I had with this book, and one of the reasons I'm only giving it a 3 out of 5 stars, is that the ending was just way too easy, in my opinion. It just felt very underwhelming. I think that the conflict between the two boys was resolved without anything really happening. Like I said, it just seemed way too easy easy and that kind of detracted from the story for me. It just didn't really make much sense, but that's my own opinion. Pick it up if you're interested in it, but I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. The final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is 7% of Roe Devereaux, and this is by Ellen O. Clover, and I end up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows high school student Roe Devereaux, who creates an app similar to the Game of MASH for her senior project. The app was designed with the help of her neighbor, Vera, who is a behavioral scientist, and this app is able to predict your future with 93% accuracy. When the app is picked up by a big tech company, Ro is very excited for this opportunity. But then Ro is matched with her ex-best friend Miller and they are paraded on a press tour and they have to pretend that they are madly in love. As the app gets bigger and bigger, Ro loses more control over what is added or changed within the app and she realizes that she may have bitten off a little bit more than she can chew and it's the story of that. This book gave me such a rush of nostalgia with all the mentions of MASH. I remember playing it with my friends in middle school. This was a super fun, really cute friends to enemies to lovers with fake dating, which are two of my favorite tropes. I guess three of my favorite tropes. So I ate that shit up. I think that the use of flashbacks in this was really clever because it gave the reason behind why Miller and Rose's friendship fell apart in the first place. I think that it definitely helped set the pacing for their relationship and I loved the slow burn of it. I think that the tension between the two characters was really well done. I really enjoyed the like waiting game that they were playing with one another. I really liked Miller's character. I didn't think I was going to like him as much as I did but I definitely think he had a lot of character development and I really liked where his character arc went in the end. Also, enjoyed Ro as a character, definitely not as much as Miller, but I really liked her relationship with Vera. I think it was very interesting to read about. I just loved how much of a mother figure Vera was for Ro. This didn't really feel like a debut novel to me, so I definitely will be checking out more from this author once they release some more stuff because I definitely liked their writing style and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that was my part 1 of my May wrap up for 2023. If you are interested in the other books that I read, then they will be posted down below for you to check out once that video is uploaded. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!